Welcome to Football Game Planner's Best Bets. I am Emery Hunt, the czar of the playbook. And as always, we have a lot to get into on this episode. And we always like to start by taking a look back at last week to see what I learned. The biggest thing I learned last week has just carried over into this week is that there were a big time overreactions to what we saw last weekend in football. In college football, when we saw Michigan lose to Michigan State as 23 point favorites, people overreacted to the line this week. Now they're only three point favorites against Indiana, who hadn't beaten them since 1987 and only nine times in 68 tries. So that's a big time overreaction. In the NFL, we saw the Baltimore Ravens lose to the Pittsburgh Steelers thanks in part to a lot of Lamar Jackson's turnovers and now we see them as only two and a half point favorites against the Indianapolis Colts who have only really beaten bad football teams. The Ravens still are a very good football team. They only lost to the Chiefs and the Steelers and we know why they lost to Pittsburgh and they still had a chance to win late in that ball game. So last week we saw teams lose. This week we see big time overreactions against the spread. Now let's get into some of my favorite prop bets for the NFL this upcoming weekend. We're going to always start with one of my favorite prop bets every weekend. Find who the Giants are playing and look at that total turnover number and take that prop bet. This week it's plus 109 against the Washington football team that there's going to be two to three turnovers in that ball game. To me, that's always an easy bet to make. You look at the Ravens game, you got to let that hate flow through your bets and make money off of the disrespect. Plus 120, Lamar Jackson throws over one and a half touchdown passes. I don't know why people still feel as though he can't pass the football despite leading the league in passing touchdowns last year. He'll have two touchdowns in this game against Indy. At plus 140, look for that Kansas City Chiefs, Carolina Panthers game to have five to six total touchdowns. I thought that was a very easy number to feel comfortable with very easy bet to make at plus 140 make yourself some money and have a nice weekend you also look at the Steelers game against Dallas seven total touchdowns I can easily see this being a 35 14 type game that's seven touchdowns right there at plus 550 you can get great return on that value in that prop against that bad football defense in Dallas and plus 700 I believe the Patriots will beat the Jets between 19 to 24 points. That's a huge number, but the Patriots defense, I think will keep a Jets offense sputtering. So take that with ease. You collect all these prop bets and you will have yourself a very nice start to November. It's time to go against the spread and we'll start in college football as there's a big one between Clemson and Notre Dame. I don't want to understate the loss of quarterback Trevor Lawrence and what he means to this Clemson offense, but that's why you recruit the way you do when you're an elite program. This is still a very good team, as evident by their comeback victory against Boston College with the freshman quarterback and DJ Ui Ungalele. Notre Dame is a very good team as well, which is why the line is at five and a half, but they are not an explosive team in my opinion, and Clemson, to me, will have at least two to three chunk plays to be able to cover the spread, so lay the points with the Tigers. This will be BYU's toughest test yet, and the odds makers reflect that with such a small point spread, while Boise State has the benefit of fresh legs, seeing that this is only their second game of the season. BYU has the benefit of both experience and focus on the task at hand, which is to crash the college football playoffs. Look for the Cougars, led by Heisman Trophy candidate quarterback Zach Wilson, to take care of business. I'm laying the points with BYU. The Chanticleers are an extremely talented team that is good on both sides of the ball. While the focus has been on their offense and the amount of points they've been able to score, it's been the defense that has been a real MVP of this team. That's a big reason why the offense has so many opportunities to score the ball like they do. Look for the defense to keep the chunk play dependent South Alabama offense at bay. I'm laying the points with the Chanticleers. Listen, I know you see the huge point spread and get scared away, but don't run from this ball game. Marshall hadn't played a game since October 24th because of postponements due to COVID-19. They're as good of a group of five team as is BYU, and the Masters must have forgotten about them because they've had three games moved already. UMass is not a very good football team and will run into a Marshall squad that will want to remind the pollsters about how great they are on defense and how they are very good and efficient on offense. I'm thinking a 63-7 type of ball game from the Thundering Herd. So trust that 44 and a half in Marshall. Let's move on to the NFL and we'll start with Baltimore and Indianapolis. If Lamar Jackson doesn't have those turnovers last week, or at least doesn't have the pick six, the Ravens win and cover versus the Steelers. This is still one of the top four teams in the NFL and they face a Colts squad coming off of an impressive beatdown of the Detroit Lions. The key matchup here 
will be between Colts quarterback Phillip Rivers and the Ravens defensive pressure. I'm taking the Ravens in that regard, so I'm laying the points with Baltimore. This is a bad matchup for the Dallas Cowboys, who will choose between Gary Gilbert and Cooper Rush to start at quarterback over the rookie, Ben DiNucci. Whoever gets the nod will be facing a top five defense in Pittsburgh that creates pressure and turns the ball over at an impressive clip. Offensively for the Steelers, they face a Cowboys defense that has struggled in eliminating the big play in the passing game. Grab this number now before it goes any higher. Lay the points with Pittsburgh. Patriots quarterback Cam Newton played much better last week versus Buffalo up until the unfortunate fumble that cost him the game. The fact that we saw glimpses of him getting back to his pre-COVID form was a good sign for this Patriots offense. Defensively, they figured to make things extremely difficult for the New York Jets, who seemed to find new and creative ways to stay in their own way on game day. This matchup couldn't have come at a better time for the Texans as they're in a desperate need for victory. The Jaguars will be starting rookie quarterback Jake Luton out of Oregon State in this ballgame, and he will more than likely be given a very conservative offensive game plan to work with. If it's a James Robinson-heavy offense, look for the Texans to load up, stop him, and try to make Luton beat them throwing a the football. I like the Texans in this one big. So that's it for this edition of Football Game Plan's Best Bets. I am Emery Hunt, the czar of the playbook. Be sure to follow me on all of my social media accounts. And don't forget to check out and subscribe to the Football Game Plan Network located at youtube.com slash football game plan. Also subscribe on iTunes to Football Game Plan Podcast and leave us a five-star rating.